rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, today I want to talk to you about the concept of something called al-ayn, which means the evil eye. I get these questions all the time. And before I talk about it, I just want you to know not to get paranoid about what I'm about to say. And that al-ayn or the evil eye or envy or people who jinx you or are jealous of you and things are going to go wrong. This is very, very rare. Now, Islam does not support superstitions and supernatural things. However, sometimes there are things that happen around the world which we just can't explain or don't understand fully. And the Quran comes and talks about it a little bit. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, talks to us to know how to protect ourselves and identify it. So al ayn literally means the eye. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, did say, which is narrated or collected by Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, al ayn haqq the evil eye is real. In all of the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu life and in all of the history of the Khulafa al-Rashidun, which is about 30 years or so, I only came across two or three instances where it reported something about the eye. And one of those instances is actually reported in An-Nasai and Ibn Habban, one of the Hadith collection books. In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu one of the companions in Ansari, they call him, he had extremely nice skin and a very nice complexion. So he took his shirt off and went into a river and when he came out, another companion saw him and he was so amazed and amused by the way his skin was and his body was. So he said, oh, not even a virgin woman inside of her oasis. It's a common thing the Arabs used to say. In other words, he says he's got even nicer and cleaner, softer skin than a woman inside of her oasis. Immediately the man fell to the floor and he became sick and couldn't move with extreme fever and I don't know what. The Prophet peace be upon him heard about and they brought him and then he said, do you know who said such and such or do you assume anyone? And they said, yes, it was obviously that man. So he brought him and he said, Ala barrakt, which means why couldn't you just say tabarakallah, oh how God has blessed him. And that's one of the things you say when you are amazed or amused by something that you see. So what happened after that was that he got the man to wash himself with some water and he put this water in certain ways onto the sick person. He was cured by the will of Allah and obviously he's the messenger of God who did that. Now brothers and sisters, Allah tells us in the Quran to seek refuge in him from every envious person. From every envious person when they envy. And one lesson we learn from that is Islam teaches us not to parade our belongings and our uh, beauties and whatever we have and show them off to the world, which is a very common thing now done on social media. People, they parade everything about themselves in the uh, meaning of getting attention or followers or likes. Maybe some people are quite sincere. They want to share their stuff with their family and friends. But you've got to be careful. There is something called the evil eye and envy. Even if people don't jinx you in a certain supernatural way, people do have something against other people and they get very jealous that they have it in for them and they gossip about them or they try to destroy what they have. So envy is when you're amused by something and you wish that you could have it. What is the way out? Well, for you, when you go out of your house or you go home or anywhere or whenever you feel that people around you may jinx you or be envious if you like, just recite ayat, قُلْ أَعُوذُ رَبِّ الْفَلَقِ and say to yourself what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to say to his grandsons, al Hassan and Al-Hussain. He used to say to them, I seek refuge in Allah and in his protection uh, upon you from every shaitan, from every evil and from every uh, foreign object or bad object that comes by. And I seek refuge in Allah from every evil eye against you. So this is what you say. And if you're amused by what you see, say, Tabarakallah, oh, the way God has blessed it. And if you are amused by something you have, sometimes people look at themselves in the mirror and they get amused by themselves and give themselves the evil eye. I've heard this before. Say, MashaAllahu can. Or you can say, MashaAllah, or you can say, MashaAllah. La quwwata illa billah. And this, we get it from Surah Al-Kahf, you know, the story about the two men with the, one of them had a garden and he was so amused by what he had built and what he had planted. And he said, oh, this is the best. And he was so boastful and he was ungrateful. And then the righteous man says to him, at least say, Masha Allah, la quwwata illa billah. Oh, what God wills. And there is no power except in Allah. He refused to say it out of arrogance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach him a lesson from this. The next day, a storm came and took it all away. So brothers and sisters, we learn these lessons to show us that 
in Islam it's not good character to show off our stuff and to parade it. There are other people who are not fortunate like us. Uh, some people, they may look at other people and think, well, I wish I had what they have. And you know, with Muslims, we have compassion towards each other, even with that sense. At the same time, you don't want people to envy you. So brothers and sisters, be humble. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ تَوَاضَ عَلِ اللَّهِ رَفَعَ Whoever humbles themselves for the sake of Allah, Allah will lift them. And wealth at the end of the day is about your happiness, your righteousness, you, you love your, your iman and yourself and you want to improve yourself and you appreciate whether you have a lot or a little. Finally, I saw a little kid today who said, look how rich I am, he's got two five Australian dollar notes. And I said, you know what? A wealthy person is not the person who's got a lot. A wealthy person is, no, is the one who knows how to manage what he has, even if it's a little bit. So brothers and sisters, enjoy your time, enjoy yourselves, enjoy what Allah has given you. Be grateful, say Alhamdulillah, say MashaAllah and say Tabarakallah and watch how happiness will creep into your life, inshaAllah ta'ala, with no fear. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Actually, I want to say one more thing. Some people, they resort to all sorts of superstitious stuff, thinking that they're going to protect them. Like there's this little tiny bead that they buy, it's blue, or they buy this gold necklace with a little blue eye in there, or they get a horseshoe, or they get all sorts of talismans and charms and amulets. Brothers and sisters, all of these are what we call shirk. Shirk means making partners with Allah. They have no power. Stones have no power. There is nothing to them, and we should avoid them altogether. Oh, some people may ask, but what if I wear those amulets and that blue eye just for good looks? Well, yeah. If it's for good looks, it's not making partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're not believing that that stone has any powers that God has. You just want to wear it because it looks nice. But still, prefer not to wear it because we're kind of promoting that belief because so many people still believe in it and it causes anxiety, mental illnesses, paranoia, trauma, fear. A Muslim doesn't need all these mental problems. Assalamu alaikum.